You are late if the market already knows. Last week, I stumbled upon a potentially huge leak on cannabis rescheduling from a relatively small account on X. I have been waiting for this news to come out for four years now, and it's finally happening and it's coming out a little bit ahead of schedule. I managed to find GameStop before it hit meme status, and I am hunting for a second unicorn. The cannabis sector is a prime target because nobody is talking about it. Marijuana stocks are near all-time lows while massive reform is right around the corner, but the market doesn't know it yet. Before I get into the leak, I wanna quickly give some context on the current state of marijuana stocks and why this leak is a much anticipated development. Currently, cannabis is a schedule one drug. Schedule one means, well, it's supposed to mean that a drug has no medical use and a high potential for abuse. Other drugs in schedule one are heroin, LSD, and ecstasy. Being schedule one or schedule two hurts the profitability of businesses that sell cannabis because of the tax treatment. You are not allowed to deduct business expenses from your gross income if that income is associated with trafficking schedule one or schedule two drugs. Here is an example of how that might play out. This hypothetical business has a gross revenue of $1 million. While cannabis is schedule one, they are paying an effective tax rate of 70%. They're paying such a high tax rate because they cannot deduct business expenses from their gross income. The government views their income as $350,000 and taxes them on $350,000, even though the company is really only profiting $150,000. In this case, if cannabis was no longer Schedule 1 or Schedule 2, the company will instantly profit $105,000 on the year instead of just $45,000 on the year. That is more than a 2x increase in profit instantly just from the rescheduling. When most of us think about paying taxes as individuals, our take-home pay really doesn't change that much. The average effective tax rate in America is 25%. If you found out that the government was gonna cut your taxes in half tomorrow, you would be stoked. But in reality, your take-home pay is only increasing by about 15%. In this case, the difference is huge. Going from 70% to 30% effective tax rate more than doubles a company's profit. But it doesn't stop there. The increased profit margins will allow legal cannabis companies to compete with the black market. More profit combined with more competitive pricing will result in massive growth in the whole sector. If cannabis is rescheduled to three, four, five, or even descheduled, then we can expect cannabis stocks to go up thanks to the increased profit and insane growth potential. So will cannabis be rescheduled? The leak I referenced earlier implies that it just might. There are two ways that a drug can be rescheduled. The first path is through Congress or the legislative branch. You can see the path is pretty straightforward. Congress can simply pass a law amending the Controlled Substances Act, allowing a drug to be moved from one schedule to another. Simple, right? Wrong. Democrats do not have a supermajority in the Senate, meaning that Republicans can easily block marijuana rescheduling by using the filibuster. Generally, a filibuster just means that one or more senators can block the vote altogether unless there is a supermajority, meaning that 60 out of 100 senators have to vote to stop the filibuster. So the legislative branch is out. The second path is purely through the executive branch, which Democrats have complete control. If we go back to the chart, the first step is to petition the attorney general of the DOJ, the Department of Justice. This step was completed by Joe Biden himself on October of 2022. Joe Biden called for a federal review of marijuana scheduling. He directed his executive order at both of the cabinets that have a role to play in this process, the Department of Justice, the DOJ, and the Department of Health and Human Services, the HHS. Normally, an outside party would file a petition to the Attorney General of the DOJ for rescheduling of a certain drug. The DOJ would then review the petition and then decide on forwarding it to the HHS. But these two steps were simultaneously knocked out when Joe Biden issued his executive order. In step three, the HHS then takes some time to review the eight criteria and decide where a drug needs to be scheduled or if it needs to be scheduled at all. It took about a year for the HHS to complete step three. And then on August 30th, 2023, they completed step four by formally recommending to the DEA, the Drug Enforcement Administration, that they recommend marijuana be rescheduled from schedule one to schedule three. So here we are, we're at the final step. The attorney general will initiate the rule making procedures, but it hasn't happened yet. Seven months later, the decision is still being reviewed by the DEA who has the sole authority at the end of the day to reschedule a drug. So what's the dang holdup? Why is the DEA still sitting on this? Well, it turns out there is a second variable. The science component has been met by the HHS. They have determined that can 
cannabis is not at high risk of abuse and it does have medical uses, but there are still legal considerations. This is where the leak I spoke of comes into play. If I go to US Code 811, Criteria for Classification, you can see that the Attorney General shall apply the provisions of this subchapter to controlled substances listed in the schedules established by Section 812 of this title and to any other drug or other substance added to such schedules under this subchapter, except as provided in subsections D and E. Okay, so in this section, it says that they can add to such a schedule or transfer between schedules, and two, they can remove drugs from any schedule. But what is the exception? Section D says international treaties, conventions, and protocols requiring control. So there we have our answer. We have a treaty that requires us to control certain substances. The treaty in question is the Single Convention on Narcotic Drugs, 1961, which reads, the Single Convention limits exclusively to medical and scientific purposes the production, manufacture, export, import, distribution, trade, use, and possession of drugs that are listed in that convention, which include marijuana. So no recreational usage. Dang. So it's over, right? Our hands are tied. Recreational marijuana isn't happening. Wait, wait a second. Canada is on here and so is Germany. Canada wasn't stopped in 2018 when they decriminalized cannabis and Germany wasn't stopped earlier this year. So maybe there is a legal precedence. In fact, it was reported on March 21st of 2024 that the HHS submitted a request to the Office of Legal Counsel, the OLC. Of course, you have to have another acronym. They submitted a request for a legal opinion on the implications of rescheduling marijuana. The Office of Legal Counsel is also in the executive branch and their opinion would be binding on the DEA in matters of law. The OLC opinion has the potential to make or break the last roadblock that, that the DEA has in the rescheduling of marijuana. This is where the leak finally comes into play. Real quick, my mission is to make investing less scary and less complicated. If you'll do me a simple favor and hit the subscribe button, I promise to continue making better and better and better investing content like this. Do we have a good? On April 17th, I was spending too much time scrolling Twitter, looking at marijuana rescheduling news when I came across a post from Anthony Farrell. My sources tell me that the OLC legal opinion requested by the HHS is done and ready to be published. It is also validating the HHS recommendation and in our favor regarding rescheduling. This tweet, if true, could be huge. Anthony did reiterate again and again that he was not commenting on the timing of when the OLC would publish, only that they had made their decision and were ready to publish. Anthony is also a co-host on a podcast called TDR. Here is a short clip of him talking about it. Last question I'll bring up, Anthony's tweet. I'm sure you saw that earlier this week pertaining to the HHS and their legal opinion from the OLC. Well, look, it's just one more data point in our, in our favor, yeah. right? To be clear, I do not know much about Anthony Varel's credibility. I am not super familiar with him. I do know that he is big in the marijuana space and his reputation is important to him, but he's also clearly an investor in marijuana, so he would be incentivized to potentially pump the stock up. So... I would want to see another source before I really jump to conclusions. Turns out there is another source. Two days later on April 19th, I saw more posts on Twitter referencing this same rumor that came from the Benzinga Capital Conference. This time quoting Earl Blumenar, hopefully I'm saying that right, who is a US representative. According to MJ Biz, rumors swirled this week that the Department of Justice Office of Legal Counsel has already made up their mind. Blumenar also said he heard those rumors. He said Friday, and as recently as yesterday, talked to some high level people in the Biden administration. There is the assumption that this is going to move forward. It's going to be positive. It's going to be embraced. It is getting more and more difficult for me to doubt the validity of this rumor now that multiple sources have come out in the positive. With the OLC on board, I cannot see a world where the DEA does not agree with the HHS recommendation on cannabis rescheduling. On top of that, Biden is incredibly motivated to get this done before the 2024 election. All of the parties involved are under the attorney general of the DOJ and Biden can hire and fire whoever he wants to get this push through. So you are ahead of the curve. Now that you know, marijuana rescheduling could happen soon. The next question is, what are you going to do about it? If you're ready to potentially 10x on this stock play, check out my video where I go over the best ways you can position yourself to profit off of marijuana rescheduling right here. Catch you on the flip side.